Hey guys, in this video I'm going to test whether injecting your meat with phosphates actually does anything. I've got this Cosmos Q Moisture Magic, and if you look at the ingredients, the only ingredient is sodium tripolyphosphate. So it's got a bunch of phosphates in it, and that's all I'm going to use for the injection. So I'm going to see if injecting actually results in a more tender product after the cook is done. I've got two identical 10 pound pork butts, and I'm going to inject one, and I'm going to leave one uninjected. For both pork butts, I'm going to use a Cosmos Q Honey Chipotle Killer Bee Rub, and I'm going to glaze it in an apple chipotle sauce, again from Cosmos Q. So we're using Cosmo Q products throughout the whole cook, and for both pork butts to keep the experiment consistent, but we're only injecting one with the actual phosphates. So stick around, let's get to the video. So we'll start mixing this injection now, and we'll just look at the instructions. It says one cup of distilled water for one eighth a cup of this mix, and that is for the injection. It's got a different instruction for the brining, but we'll go by the injection instructions. So I filled this bowl up with four cups of cold distilled water, so that means we need a half a cup of this product. I'm going to use a quarter measuring cup, so two scoops of this, and we should be good. So I'll open this up, and this is the first time I've used this before, so I'm really interested to see what the results are. I've never used a phosphate injection before, so very, very interested to see what the results will be. Okay, let's get a scoop of that. Try to get as even as possible. All right. There we go. So now we'll stir this up thoroughly. Now apparently if you buy phosphates from a local butcher or the phosphates aren't very high quality, then they can clump and they're not as good at dissolving in the water and that can produce a not so great result. What Cosmo Q does is it has a much more soluble mix of the phosphates according to the reviews on the product. So that'll be interesting to see how well this dissolves. It looks like it's dissolving pretty well right now. Now normally I would mix in a bunch of salt with this, maybe some Worcestershire sauce. I might mix in some soy sauce and some other injectable fluid, but for now I'm just going to test out this phosphate mixture. Okay, now that that's mixed up, I'm going to inject it into the pork. Now if you're wondering why I'm only wearing one glove, it's because that means that I know that I'm only going to touch the raw meat with my gloved hands. I'm gonna keep this hand free for touching the other stuff for food safety reasons. So we're gonna leave the meat in the package because it's all sealed up tightly and it makes it much easier to inject when it's in the plastic because then you don't get any moisture splashing back at you and everything just gets retained inside of that package. So we're going to suck up some of this injection. Now there's a couple of different ways to inject. One school of thought says to go with the grain and one school of thought says to go against the grain. And I think both camps sort of say that the other way of doing it results in a discoloration of the meat when you cut into it. But I wouldn't worry about that too much. I'd just start injecting however you want. Just make sure that you make an injection about every square inch and cover the entire uh, surface with, uh, with little dots and make sure that you fill up the entire pork shoulder with enough moisture. So we'll start here and we'll just start doing some injection. Now I'm just putting about half of this tube in. You can see a little squirt back coming there. And then I'm pulling out as I'm pushing the tube in to make sure that it gets evenly injected throughout the meat. Now we're putting quite a bit of moisture into this pork shoulder and it's not gonna retain all that moisture. A lot of it is going to sit in pockets inside the meat and it's not going to absorb into the muscle tissue because this is already like such a huge portion of moisture that it doesn't have the ability to suck up much more unless you use a lot of salt, which we're not using. But we're gonna put in as much of the four cups of brine as we can, and we'll see how much it can retain. It should uh, blow up a little bit, and you should see it noticeably get larger in size after you put all that extra moisture in it. 
And as I come over to this side, I wanna make sure that I'm getting the money muscle injected here. This is the muscle that we serve up to the judges in barbecue competitions. And when we do, we get called up to the stage and we get a fat check because this is the most tender part of the pork butt. So we wanna make sure that we got a lot of uh, injection fluid in this particular muscle. So now I've injected the whole four cups of phosphate solution into this pork shoulder. Everything is evenly distributed. You can see the holes all over the pork shoulder. It's retained a lot of the moisture that I've injected into it, but some of it's leaking out. That's natural, it can't retain everything. This pork shoulder is like the berry bonds of pork shoulder. We're injecting it with performance enhancing phosphates so that it knocks it out of the park when it comes out of the smoker. So that's exactly what's gonna happen with this thing. I'm hoping that these phosphates perform. Now that we've got our meat injected, we're going to start butchering it. So we'll take it out of the plastic package and we're going to start by removing this fat cap down to about a quarter inch thickness. It's pretty good right now, but there's still a bunch of chunks of pretty thick fat that I wanna carve away a little bit. And the reason that we trim this down to a quarter inch thickness is because when this is all done, the bark is going to form on the fat, but it's all going to separate from the actual pork because fat doesn't do a really good job of forming bark. So what we want to do is trim it down so that all the smoke and the bark formation gets a chance to penetrate and form onto the actual muscle tissue. So we want to carve it down to one quarter inch because all that quarter inch of fat is going to render down and just baste the rest of the pork shoulder. If we have a half inch or even an inch of fat on top, all that fat's not gonna render down properly and that smoke isn't going to reach the actual meat. So that's why we wanna carve it down to a quarter inch. So we're just taking little bits off. I'm checking periodically to make sure that I'm not cutting too deep into the actual meat itself. We can save that fat for sausage making. And we're just carving up the large pieces it's okay if you cut through to the meat in a couple areas, as long as you're getting the quarter inch in most areas. And this is really good fat for sausage. It's nice and soft and it tastes really good in sausage. If you have any venison from this year's hunting season, or even if you just buy some extra pork from the store or beef or a beef and pork mixture, this is great to mix it in with. You know, there's no real right way to do this. You just wanna trim off a bunch of the fat so that you just get enough that it's going to be able to render down a little bit. So that looks pretty good. I think I've got it to where I want it now. So now I'm going to start applying my rub. I've got a Cosmos Q Honey Chipotle Killer Bee Rub. Now this says that it has sugar, salt, honey powder, spices, paprika, chipotle, so a little bit of spice, some dextrose, dehydrated garlic, celery, silicon dioxide to prevent caking, and paprika. So not a lot of additives, there's no MSG in it, so this looks pretty good and I've heard some good things, so I'm gonna try it out. Just pop that open. And normally I would probably cover this in a mustard rub, but for this cook, I think that the pork has enough moisture on it that it's going to bind with the rub just fine. So I'll put that on now. This is a really nice shaker bottle actually. It's going on really evenly. Usually I make my own rub and I put it in my custom shaker bottle, but this one is really nice. Look how evenly that's going on. So we'll get that coated. And this is our money muscle here, so we want to make sure we're getting quite a bit of rub on it. Look at that. You can see the sugar coming out of it. There's lots of sugar in here, and that means this pork shoulder is going to be really good. And now I'm going to flip it over and do one more coating on the top, because this is the top side that's going to face up during the whole cook. And I want a nice presentation, and I want all the spices to be able to melt down during the cooking process as the fat renders out and baste the rest of the pork shoulder. So I'm gonna make sure there's a pretty heavy dose of rub on the top here. All right, now we can leave this to sit at room temperature for about an hour. I'm going to check the temperature right now with my therm pen. And at the center of it, it's reading 43 degrees Fahrenheit. 
So we want that to come up quite a bit before we put it on the smoker because we want to shorten this pork shoulders temperature journey. We don't want to put it onto the smoker when it's super cold because it's going to take a lot longer to cook it. Now, because this is a test cook, I'm going to be cooking at 400 degrees Fahrenheit on my Pit Boss pellet smoker. This is an extremely high temperature for barbecue, but I want to put this pork through the worst case scenario. The high heat is going to wick away a lot of that moisture, and these pork shoulders are going to lose a lot of moisture as a result. The phosphates in the ejected shoulder should prevent that moisture loss. Many studies have found that phosphates help retain moisture in meat, and they're widely used in the food industry. One study stated that the usage of the appropriate amount and mixture of phosphates can lead to the improvement of some properties of final products, such as moisture retention, water holding, color protection, slowing down of oxidization, extension of shelf life, stabilizing, and enhancing structure of final products. So I have a pretty good idea that the phosphates injected in the one pork shoulder are going to help it retain more moisture than the uninjected shoulder. By cooking both shoulders at a higher temperature, the difference between the two pieces of meat should be a lot more clear when I start pulling them into pulled pork. Every 30 minutes I open the pit boss to swap the positions of the pork shoulders and I hit them with some basting spray made from the Cosmos Q sauce. I switch them frequently because the pit boss flame is on the left side of the smoker and I wanted to make sure both pieces of meat are getting an even amount of heat. When the shoulders hit an internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit, I took them off the grill and wrapped them tightly in foil after I added a bit more basting sauce. Then I put them back on the pit boss at 400 until they reach an internal temperature of 200 degrees Fahrenheit. This is around the temperature when the fat starts to render and all the connective tissue starts to break down. After that, I let the shoulders rest for an hour and then started pulling them with two forks. Both pork shoulders were burnt on the underside because that's where most of the heat was coming from as we cooked them at high temperature on the Pit Boss pellet smoker. Normally I would never cook a piece of barbecued meat at this temperature, but for the sake of science, we really wanted to put these two pork shoulders through their paces. Having said that, the meat actually turned out pretty good. The shoulder without the injection was pretty tough to pull apart with the forks. It had noticeably less moisture and it was really dry. But the phosphate injected pork shoulder pulled apart easily and had lots of liquid and moisture still remaining in the meat. When we do a close-up of the phosphate injected pork, you can see that there's quite a bit of moisture and tenderness in the individual fibers and strands of the meat. But if we look at the non-injected meat, it looks dry and there's not a lot of moisture remaining. From a taste perspective, the phosphate injected pork was much more tender and fell apart much more easily than the non-injected pork. All in all, I'm now convinced that phosphates do a really good job of retaining moisture in barbecued meats, and they're probably more effective than just salt water injections. But that's an experiment for another day. I hope you found this video informative, and I hope it helped you decide whether you want to use phosphates in your own barbecue. I should note that the verdict is still out on whether phosphates are harmful to your health, and you should do your own research and know the risks before consuming high amounts of it in your barbecue. Like everything, it's probably best to use it in moderation. Thanks a lot for watching guys, don't forget to like the video and subscribe so you can stay up to date on all my latest videos. Thanks again and happy smoking!